Carlos Diaz, Gunners Collective TV. Back at it? You already know. Like a motherfucking smack addict. Bye, ya. Bye, ya. Bye, ya. In the middle of the start in direct fashion, we're going to get straight into the content of the day. But before we do, let's hit that like and subscribe button. Put that notification bell on all so that way you're directed in the direction of the dope content I am kicking. And I highly appreciate all the support I'm getting. We're going up. So <clears throat> I've noticed a lot of content creators on YouTube have been talking about you know, something that popped off this week. And it's pretty major if you're behind them walls. I mean, it doesn't really pertain to what's going on out here. It doesn't affect our everyday lives. As Mexicanos, we're going to keep on pushing, right? Keep on striving, working hard, and doing what men do. But behind them walls, it definitely is a situation of lockdown. It's a situation where it seems like the authorities of the administration is pretty fucking upset, right? And um, so what happened is in Ironwood prison, if anyone knows where Ironwood prison is, it's in Riverside County, down it's down south, Southern California. Um, it's always been a stronghold for Southsiders, meaning there's always been numerous, uh, an abundance of Southsiders on that yard. And uh, they've had that yard for years, man. Ironwood has been known as a vicious yard in the past. Um, and it's an active, a general population yard. It functions. So what had happened the other day was, you know, from what I read, what they put out there, and I'm going to give you a little in-depth because I've talked to a couple people, but from what I heard is they were escorting somebody across the yard, a southerner, a south sider across the yard. Um, and one thing about when they escort you in prison is usually it's no less than two guards. Um, they snatch you up around your arms. There's a lot of people that don't like to be held around their arms. They don't like to be held. So if depending upon your status and who you are, if you're an OG, a lifer, or you've been around or you're somebody that's somebody, most of the time they won't even grab you around the arms. They'll kind of just walk and you'll just follow them. They walk on the side of you. It is what it is. When they're escorting someone to administrative segregation or across the yard, they usually try to do it while yard is inside after yard recall. But if something pops off and they need to snatch someone up, there has been incidences where depending upon who it is, they'll lay the yard down for the escort. Or sometimes they'll just escort whoever they're escorting across the yard. Usually nobody trips. But in this situation, what had happened was these cops had decided that if for no other reason they were going to hit certain cells. What I mean by hitting cells is they were going to search them. And this is a random thing that happens. Well, it's not really random. Sometimes it's random and they'll search their, they have like a quota. They have to search a certain amount of cells in every building a day, right? So you'll see the cops just pop random doors searching. For the most part though, um, if they're going to search your cell, it's because someone probably dropped a kite or they think that you know something or they you have something within that cell. They're looking for something in particular. You know, so uh, most of the times they hit a cell, they're pretty thorough. If IGI comes, which is the Kukuis, if the IGI, the black patches come onto the building, they're going to tear up all known gang member cells, anyone that they want to validate or they have an agenda. So anyways, they hit this guy's cell. Now, from what I'm hearing from the inside, from a partner, he's told me, that this guy was somebody, okay? He just wasn't your regular Joe Schmo. He was actually somebody um, with status, someone who was well-respected. So you have to understand, this is the reason why all this took place. He gets his cell hit, whatever's clever, right? They find whatever they find, and they decide that they're going to escort him either to one, to pro the program office to facilitate a conversation and try to find out what's going on, or two, they're going to fucking take them straight to ADSEG because they already found what they need and it is what it is. In any case, as they were escorting this guy path in the yard, um, the word was, or what they put out there, the administration, the CDC, was that this guy lunged and tried to headbutt an officer. I can see that happening, but I don't think that really happened in this case. From what I'm thinking is they were escorting him to the hole or wherever they were escorting him to. And they got a little aggressive in their mannerisms and the way that they were conducting that fucking escort. Meaning, like I said, I had homeboys that were lifers that will tell you they don't like to be grabbed around their arms. Now, for the most part, they usually grab you around your arms. Sometimes you're on a tether. It just depends on how they're escorting you in that particular yard. Every yard and all officers are trained differently. Anyway, so maybe they might have grabbed him around his arms. He didn't like, you know, how they were grabbing him and he kind of pulled off. They can misconstrue that as him lunging or trying to headbutt him. And of course, they're going to take you down. It happens all the time. Now, in this case, from what I'm hearing and from what everyone's saying is that when they took this guy down quite aggressively, the Southerners that were on that yard, there was over 200 Southsiders. They said it was a riot with 200 inmates. They got off on the cops. It was actually 200 Southsiders. 
If they see one of their camaradas, one of their homeboys, um, it's a one jump, all jump thing. It's been like that since the youth authority. I can tell you, if you disrespect the hand theory or you fuck with one bean, you're going to fight the whole burrito straight up. And with the South side, they're a militant, pretty structured group. Whereas if you fuck with one of them, homes, they're going to go. They're going to go. Nobody is off limits. Just because it's the K-9 or the cops, for the most part, people try to have decent interaction with the COs, man. You're not going to see COs getting hit all the time. I don't give a fuck what they tell you and what stories you hear on YouTube. It's not like COs are getting hit constantly. Um, if a CO disrespects a man, though, any man, whether it's North, South, Kumi, Black, Crip, Blood, Woods, whatever, Vatos are going to get off straight up. Um, nobody is immune to being a man. You know, every day that these officers go into them on the prison yards, they understand that they're they're just like anyone else that when they pop the door and you go out to the yard, everybody is susceptible to repercussions. Everyone's susceptible to getting hit. Okay? If a group as well known and as, as violent and vicious as the Southern Hispanics feel, the Southsiders feel like you're disrespecting them or you're doing them dirty, they're going to get off. Okay? The Norteños are the same way, as well as Crips, Bloods, Whites, everybody. There's not a group in prison, especially in a place like Ironwood, a functioning facility that are not going to rock for their homeboys. If they feel disrespected, disregarded, or anything, they're going to make their presence felt. You know, that's just prison. And I understand that these officers understand that as well. You know, if you got someone of a high caliber and you're escorting them across the yard, you better do it respectfully. You would think that these guys would know by now, but this could be a case where maybe these guys were improperly trained or just didn't give a fuck. See, people become laxed in prison. They become relaxed because maybe there hasn't been any officers assaulted or nothing bad happened for a long time. So they think that these guys on the yard ain't about the business or won't get off. But hey, how quickly the day turns, right? So what the word is, is that they aggressively took this guy down, slammed him, and that the Southsiders seen it and they felt some type of way, so they rushed the COs. Now, of course, several COs were assaulted. I don't know if they were hit with pieces because it wasn't a pre-planned attack. It wasn't like something like it was on site or there was a green light. Now, there have been instances in prison where SEALs have been green lighted. You know, there's, maybe there's a couple SEALs that are doing people dirty, fucking with their mail, treating them bad. And one group or one organization decides that if for no other reason, they're not going to take it no more. They're going to just fucking put an all point bulletin on these guys. And But most of the time, it's usually pinpointed or or in the direction of the guys who are actually aggravating the gente, the ones that are actually doing it. One thing I've learned about convicts is everything they do, they do it smooth and with a purpose. Okay, they don't just, they're not going to cause a wreck because they, guess what happens? That's how I know this was not a pre-planned or an arranged thing. It was just a spur of the moment thing because this is definitely conflicted with their program. It is, fuck, it is fucked up. Whatever is going on in that yard, it's definitely affected it. I was hearing there was a statewide um, lockdown. I could dispel that. There was no statewide lockdown. Several different places in the surrounding areas were on lockdown. And of course, they're going to do that. These officers are going to investigate, figure if this was, you know, try to figure out if this was pre-planned, if this was arranged, if these guys are going to stay being hostile and aggressive. And they want to minimize things. And, and time minimizes but lockdown only stirs more controversy and more bullshit. See, when you fuck up someone's program, if they had a family visit coming, a visita, a package, it affects all that. And it affects everybody. You know, for them doing a statewide lockdown, I couldn't see that happening over this incident. I mean, there were, this is the first time in a very long time that this many officers in one facility were assaulted. You know, according to uh, what I've heard and what I've read, it was eight or nine officers assaulted and one inmate. The inmate that was assaulted, of course, was the guy that they were transporting or, tra you know, escorting. So do I believe that this is going to continue on and hit every institution? I don't think so. I think this is an isolated incident that can be figured out amongst whoever's there. You know, I believe that it's just a typical thing of disrespect. And I told you guys several times in several spills, disrespect in prison is one of the main things that can get you whacked or clipped, right? You know, you treat everybody with respect, whether it's the K-9, which is the officers, another word for the officers, um, counselors, free staff, uh, administration, your fellow convicts. Um, everyone is to be treated with respect until it comes to a point where they're not, okay? Because just as easily as you can give it, you can take it. That's just what it is. I think that, you know, the Southsiders, they're a very known group. They don't fuck around. They usually have the numbers, 
Um, they're usually, for the most part, doing their own thing, running their own program, uh, tripping within their own people. They're not really tripping off anyone else. But if it comes to guerra, if it comes to war, they're quick to jump, you know, jump up and handle their business, just like any other group. There's no difference. Um, and the cops are not off limits. I think we've heard that before in a spill. There's never a time where the K9 uh, is not to be touched. There's never a time to touch a K9, though, unless it's a disrespect thing. You know, it's not like Vaughtles uh, wake up in the morning and they pre-plan hitting cops just because they're cops. Everybody knows their position in prison. There's going to be officers and there's going to be convicts, man. And you have to work hand in hand and together to facilitate a program there. They have the keys and you have a different type of key. And you have to understand that at the end of the day, albeit the convicts might run that prison, ultimately the gun shuts everything down. Now, I can understand where the CEOs are feeling some way. I seen um, Hector, who is the, 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 the CEO, who has a channel, man, respects to that bottle. I watch a lot of his spills. He has a lot of good glitch. I, I mean, he's been on the other side. He's been that guy behind the badge. He knows a lot of it about a little bit and a little bit about a lot of it. See, he, he has been, you know, I would love to pick his brain and sit down and have a conversation with him because he has been that one um that sees what goes on behind the scenes, whether it's reckless moves by inmates and convicts or reckless moves by staff, because best believe nobody's innocent. There's a lot of corruption in the CDC. There's a lot of shit that goes on behind closed doors that he, you know, according to his channel, what I've seen didn't agree with everything, man. And that's why he kind of took a step away from that. Actually having that job is because I believe he's a firm believer in equality for all guys, social status of equality. And there are a lot of fucking CEOs that will treat people like shit uh, uh, um, you know, treat them some type of way just because they're incarcerated, you know, but you have to watch what you do in prison. There are those that need respect, man, because they don't fuck around. So anyways, I seen where he did a video where he was a little upset. It seemed like he was slightly upset, um, you know, and I could, I could feel that him being a, um, a CEO at one point in time, like, man, why would these guys make these moves? But there's nothing new. This ain't nothing new. You know, a, a disrespect's not to be taken lightly, especially in prison, in life, period, as uh, grown men. And anybody can get it. That's always been the model. You know, now I can understand these SEALs feeling some type of way. And what's going to happen? They're probably going to hit a lot of people's cells. They're going to turn shit upside down because they feel like you can't touch us. Who the fuck do you think you guys think you are touching us? That's how they felt. Um, but in reality is you can't do that to people either. See, in reality, just because you have a badge and 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 some mace homes and a couple keys doesn't give you the right to treat a person any old way that you want to. Now, some of these guys, they get hired on the COs with just a GED and they think, they think they have the right to discipline people or to punk people or treat people some type of way, but there's not a man that's on a four or three yard that's going to stand for that. Okay, I've seen several altercations between officers and inmates and convicts. And I can tell you right now, for the most part, you know, most of the old school, just like there's old school convicts, there's old school officers. You ain't seen them getting them wrecks. Mm -mm. They know what time it is. They're like, nah, these bottles don't play. Homes. These bottles will smash you. Now, in any case, um, I feel like there could be some retaliatory things going on, um, especially in that facility. You know, they're feeling a lot of these COs, they're a big team. They're, they're a family, just like. These convicts that function together are homies, right? So if they feel like fucking their homeboy got fucked off, they're going to fuck you off. And these guys feel like their homeboys got fucked off, they're going to retaliate the best way they can. Now, ultimately, at the end of the day, they do have the upper hand because they have the keys and they can control movement by slamming everyone down. But ultimately, you have to let these guys out eventually. And when they come out, it's up to the way you conducted yourself while they were on lockdown. And what happens after the fact how program is going to go. Because one thing about the Southsiders, man, until they are satisfied, they are the deepest group. They are the most vicious group in prison, period. And until these Vatos are satisfied and feel that they got theirs, they will keep going and going and going. It's just the way they are. It's the way they're built, man. There's a lot of people that think, oh man, the Southsiders, they got off with the blacks and that's cool or whatever, something like that. But you don't understand, there was absolutely a thing in the background way back in the days I used to hear in the oil functioning around Southsiders as a North Daniel active, where they used to be like, hey, we got to hit them three times. Vatos would come and then throw another wave and then throw another wave until they felt that they ultimately got theirs. Now with the SEALs, I could see this being different. More of an isolated incident. 
Um, they ultimately know, man, the cops can make your time horrible. They can either make it good or relax, or they can make it fucked up, right? Um, <clears throat> let's get a little bit deeper. You know, I see these situations, um, just like I was telling the homeboy the other day, I see situations where this integration and bringing people and mixing people, S and Ys and active and all these different types of things that the CDC seems to be doing. To me, it seems like they're looking for any fucking reason to change what was implemented a while back with the end of hostilities and with all the hunger strikes. They're trying to slam these guys back in the back again. You know, that's when you lose, when you take one on the chin, a court case, you feel it some type of way. Well, CDC lost, man. You know, and they had to bring guys that they necessarily didn't want to bring out to these yards. Not saying that these guys are out there fucking shit up or doing bad, man. These guys deserved to be out of them dungeons. But the CDC ain't liking that. They want to slam them back. And they're going to look for any type of reason and any way to justify it. This could be one of the reasonings to justify that. You know, they're definitely going to raise, it's going to raise questions onto, you know, how powerful these prison gangs or groups are. You know, and, and what they're capable of. Well, they ain't capable of more than they are capable of last week and the year before that and 10 years before that. Do you understand? As long as that everything was a, on a respectful tip, then they don't start no shit, won't be no shit. I've learned that. And one thing is you can't take it personal. I know there's going to be a lot of CEOs that are going to take it personal because their homeboy got smack, smashed on. That's just like when North and South used to get off, man. I never took it personal. Business is business. I understand the game. There was a lot of Southsiders that were my vecinos next door neighbors. We used to shoot each other bars of soap, sopas, chop it up all day, man. Pass CDs back and forth to each other. Buenos dias, respect. Yeah, it would trip you guys out. All you net bangers that bang back and forth, it'll really fucking trip you out, right? We had a lot of respect, a lot of shit, almost to the point of canalismo right there. Raza, showing raza love. But if them doors cracked, then we already knew what time it was. That's the difference between a real gang member, a gangster homes, and, and and knowing the program and getting down with it, rather than being a cell warrior, a net banger, and a bullshitter, right? There's a difference there. You know, these guys that fucking go on the internet and, and scream and yell and, and, and disrespect, you know, he ain't never been nowhere, homes. There's not a one person that's been to a four yard that does that, bro. They were laced differently. Anyways, so... With this situation that happened in Ironwood, do I think it's going to escalate to other prisons? I don't. I really can't see that. Do I see them? Uh, uh, they lock down several facilities. Absolutely, man, because they're scared. They're being cautious. They're wondering. But once they figure out exactly what it is in me, I'm on the outside looking in and I figured it out quick. And I talked to a couple people that agreed with me. Um, this was an isolated incident where, you know, Valtus felt disrespected and they got off. You know, you can't. <laughs> Uh, that's why most of these movements that they do, they'll shut the yard down or they're what to everyone's on yard recall before they do these movements. Um, I didn't understand why they decided to walk that man across the yard with all his camaradas and his homeboys out there and then, uh, you know, do what they did, which was slam them down on the yard. Um, that's definitely going to fucking pop some shit off. And it did, you know, so um, none of these guys got stabbed. None of these guys are, um, it was a life or death situation. But it's definitely a situation that the CDC is going to look at and try to utilize, man, to slam people in the back. And it's definitely a situation where the Southerners, because it involved the Southsiders, not the whites, blacks, Northerners, none of them. Um, the beat goes on. You know, they did what they they did what they're trained to do. They did what they do, man. I'm not surprised when Southsiders get off or Norteños get off or blacks or whites in prison. It happens all the time, man. Um, what leads up to it is more the story rather than them handling the business. Shit could pop off at any time. It's just the way it is. Anyways, with that being said, man, there's my little take on the Ironwood incident. Like I said, um, do I think it's going to get bigger and crazier? No. Fuck no, man. You know, Valtas just did their thing. They felt their, hey, you fucking slam my homeboy in front of me and see what happens. You're going to jump for your homie, right? Only this time there was 200 homies on the yard to do that. Ooh, wait. You know, it gets tricky. You know, and, and, and for the SEALs that are not trained properly, and don't know the procedures, you know, hey, look at everybody's the same, but not everybody's the same. Okay. There's guys on these upper level yards, man, with status, bro, that you, albeit you're a cop and you think that you fucking don't have, you don't, man, I don't care. He's a gang member. Shit, homie. <laughs> you better recognize who you're fucking with and know who you're dealing with while you're dealing with them because it gets tricky.
And that's all I got to say about that. With that being said, I hope that you move forward with a purpose, get everything that you want coming. And remember, at the end of the day, it's all about the strive, the struggle, the struggle, the strive. And it is what it is, man. Thumbs up or thumbs down. Hey, he's going to be the head that wears the crown. I'm going to continue to strive and struggle for what I truly believe in, and that's the betterment of all people. Can't we all just get along? We can. If you don't touch me when you're escorting me, bang, bang. It'll be like that.